day dear learners i hope you are all doing fine welcome to today's history lesson our topic for today is protection treaties to understand the whole concept of protection treaties we must understand who were the indigenous leaders and why they signed the protection treaties and also who signed the protection treaty now our indigenous leaders that we are going to focus on for today were as follows Hermanus van Veik, which was the leader at that time of the real both busters, he signed the treaty. Chief Maherero, which was the leader of the Herero clan, that time also signed the treaty. Jan Jonker Af Afrikaner was the leader for the Namas. He didn't sign the treaty. Along with him was Hendrik Vetboy, who also didn't sign the treaty. Cornelia Swartboy was also a leader of the Namas and he signed the treaty. Now, what is a protection treaty? Now, we need to break it down in two parts because we need to understand what a treaty is before we add protection to it. A treaty is a binding agreement concluded by subjects of law, naming, uh, namely between two or more parties or, or organizations. It's a formal agreement between two or more states. Let's picture this, for example, say you are at school and you are being bullied by someone, maybe a grade 12 learner. And then you come and tell me, and then I say, okay, let's make an agreement. If you pay me this amount, I will make sure that you are not being bullied. And in case you are bullied, I will come in to protect you. I will come and defend you. So the same thing was done in the past. And that was called a protection treaty. It, it was an agreement that said that the two parties or one party would make a pledge to the other to protect that party or more parties. So this is what happened um, in the past. This agreement was made between the Germans and some of our leaders and their tribes. The road that led to the signing of protection treaties. Let's see what happened. To understand why treaties were signed, we need to understand their importance. Why are the treaties important? Why were the treaties that time important? Why did the leaders sign these treaties? The Nama, Herero, and other tribes had disagreement throughout the years. Let's remember that we were not a perfect nation even at that time. There were disagreements between the tribes. Some Herero clans did not like the Namas, and they felt like uh, because they have had almost the same way of lifestyle, which was herding and so on, and some were hunters, both clans saw that they were each other's conflict of interest. So along the years, they had very big disputes. They had very big disagreements. And it was mainly on distribution of land as well as livestock, as I mentioned, such as horses, cattle, and others. So you know how it is, even today, you can argue today, you argue tomorrow. If you continue arguing by words, ne? you are just using words. In two or three weeks time, or even less than that time, there is a time that you catch one another. You fight physically. And that's the same thing that happened. Because when you're arguing, it's like your words are not getting through the other person's head. And vice versa. So what comes next? Action. Physical. So that's what happened also to the Herero, the Nama, and the other tribes. They started having wars against each other. And these wars were very long wars that last, uh, lasted a lot of years. And you know what? The Germans saw, oh, oh they are not as united. So what are we going to do? We are going to offer them protection treaties 
thinking that we are protecting one tribe against each other, but at the end of the day, we are doing this to gain control of their land. Because just reason. I mean, if I made a pledge to you that I will protect you against the bully, does it make sense for me to make a, a, um, a pledge to the bully as well? So imagine if I make a pledge to the bully and I make a pledge to you, you both paid me. At the end of the day, when you fight, what am I going to do? Now do you understand their reasoning? Eh? Their reason or their motive was not to really offer protection. It was to have control of the two parties because now I'm in control of you and I'm in control of the bully. So they figured that this would be a very strategic way to con have control over our Namibian nation at that time the Southwest African nation. Some leaders thought that signing protection treaties with the German would offer them protection and help them win the wars. But others saw right through the German trick. An example of this was uh, Captain Hendrik Wedboy and uh, Captain Jan Jonker Afrikaner. In the next slide we'll see just how clever Hendrik Vetboy was and how much of a bigger person he was. So the German used this tension between, uh, between the Hereros and the Namas, especially because they thought that this would prevent the Hereros and Namas from uniting and fighting them. Just let's go back to our example. Say I give a pledge to you, I pledge to you, and I also pledge to the bully. At the end of the day, if I start treating you badly, both of you, and doing the same things to you that you do to each other, do you think you will be strong enough to unite and fight against me? Well, if you are smart, then you would unite forces. And that's what happened in the future. But they thought, the Germans, that we were as Namibians, as, Nami as a Namibian nation, as the Herero and Nama tribes, that they were not strong enough to unite forces. However, this was a very smart strategy. Because it could have happened like in other countries such as uh, Angola and so on, where civil, and even in Congo and other countries where civil war has been uh, going on for more than 30 years and people don't unite still. But luckily for us, this was vice versa. Now let's just see how smart Captain Hendrik Vetboy was, what a bigger, uh, bigger person he was. Now what we see here is an extract from let, a letter from Hendrik Vetboy to Chief Maherero. Remember that that time Hendrik Vetboy was a captain, a leader to the Nama people. And Chief Maherero was a leader to the Herero people. And they were not seeing eye to eye. But Hendrik Vetboy said, uh uh, these Germans will not come here and fool us. Let me put my hatred aside and try to reason with Chief Maherero that what they are doing is not for the benefit of us too. It's to control us. This is what he said. You are to be protected and helped by the German government. But do you realize what you have done? You are handing over your land and freedom to the white people. This will only bring you problems in the future. You are like the jackal. You are carrying the sun on your back. Very wise words, isn't it? Chief Maherero fell in this trap. But Hendrik Vetboy saw that this 
would really not work on both sides. I hope you enjoyed our lesson for today. This is the end of it. I'm looking forward to our next lesson. Then in the next lesson, we'll learn how the treaties were signed and also the aftermath of the signing of these treaties.